Hi, my name is uh, Shaul. I've been an amateur photographer for more than 35 years. And um, what I like to shoot is uh, people, not portraits. Just people in the natural environment, you know. Natural, fly on the wall photos. This channel is called uh, the Dirty Photography Club for a reason. I see myself as an author. I take uh, subjects that are already there and by choosing a point of view in a moment I tell my story which is enrooted in the real world but is m my own point of view as an author, I, I, I am willing to make a lot of compromises in the technical sense. I don't crop. I don't pixel peep. I don't care about noise. I don't care about dynamic range. I only care about capturing real life and making photos of uh, real life that are true to life is my main priority. As I said before, I'm an amateur photographer. I have done uh, paid jigs now and again, but I don't consider myself a professional. Nowadays I mainly photograph in, a, in our pub. We live in a small community in northern Israel. Only 300 people or so. So, I know everyone, which is a big advantage. And they know me too, so I have no problem to be the fly on the wall in our local pub, in our events. It's just a small community in our small kibbutz. From the beginning of um, my life as a digital photographer, I realized that uh, lenses do make a difference. It's not a cliche. I've begun with uh, compact digital cameras, then I moved to DSLRs, then to mirrorless, to DSLRs again and to mirrorless again. Nowadays I shoot uh, film DSLRs, digital DSLRs and mirrorless. And over the years, the technical quality of my images has, has not improved. I mean, of course, images are less noisy at higher ISO values. But basically there is no improvement in image quality. Images have not become more true to life, which is what I am after. In my professional life, 
I'm a scientist, a biologist to be exact. As a biologist, I have not much knowledge about physics and uh, lens design or anything to do with that. But I have the ability to, to take empirical subjective data, comparing it to precise numerical data, and uh, linking it in, in the desire to create useful insights about the qualities, the properties of lenses, of cameras. Hopefully I can make my humble contribution to the photo community. This is my first video for, for this channel. I'm not a native English speaker and I have this uh, obscene tendency to think while I speak so things might get quite slow. I'm sorry for that, it's, it's somewhat of a weakness, I know. But stay with me, let's explore together the phenomenon of uh, 3D prop in images. To put it simply, I'm looking for rendering that is easy on the eye. There is a sense of space around objects that is uh, independent of uh, depth of field. Like um, everything is lit by a little bit of backlighting. Uh, whether it's there or not. A rendering that uh, conveys the depth of the, of the scene. Where textures are conveyed in a natural manner. This rendering doesn't put uh, much strain on us when we view the photos. We, we understand uh, the scene, even if uh, a lot of it is blurred. This rendering gives a dynamic feel to the photos. They feel alive. It's easy to concentrate on the emotion, if you know what I mean. I shot this uh, scene with three different lenses. The first lens shown here is uh, one that has distinct 3D pop. The second lens has a bit less. And the third lens is uh, considered flat. And now it's a faster succession. Can you see the diminishing depth? Well, I can definitely see it. So, how can we explain the differences? Let's look at the section of the path in the scene. You can see differences in the transition 
of brightness from shadow to highlight. Lens 1 has a gradual uh, transition, while Lens 3 has a harsh transition. Lens 2 strikes a balance in between. Now, uh, the magnification here is uh, almost 100%, and uh, at this magnification it is evident that lens 3 is the sharpest one, while lens 1 is the least sharp. Again, then lens 2 strikes a balance in between. To put it differently, different lenses have different uh, tone curves. Lens 3 has a uh, high sensitivity to light, giving a uh, type of an S-curve, while lens 1 is almost more resistant to light, which gives a more linear tone curve. Just keep this in mind. Um, we'll be back to it in, in the next parts of this uh, series. Now what happens if we apply those differences to a three-dimensional object. Well, here I used uh, other lenses, but uh, with the same idea. Well, we can clearly see that uh, lens 3 looks distinctly less dimensional than uh, lenses 1 and 2. So, what is happening is that uh, we see the, the world in uh, 2D. Our eyes are uh, projecting to the brain a flat image. And the brain looks for cues in the image it uh, receives to estimate uh, the form of object by the, the curvature of the surfaces. We interpret the curvature from the, the transition from brightness to darkness. There is a certain level of gradation that looks natural to us. In this example, the, the image made by lens number one is uh, the most natural. Lens number three made an image that is a bit confusing. We need to combine the visual information with everything that we know about uh, bunnies and about clay working in order to interpret the image correctly. It's an extra step for the brain. Unfortunately, our brains are lazy. So, looking at such images is uh, a bit less pleasing, I think. There is another, uh, a bit more subtle characteristic of poppy images, and that is the subtle definition of uh, layers in the image. As you can see in this one, there is a distinct separation between um, the figures and the background. You can also uh, see it clearly in uh, this image, the separation. Let's have a look at two images. This is an image that I consider quite flat, while this is an image taken with another lens that uh, shows more depth. 
I used an edge detection algorithm in order to find uh, very thin edges, harsh edges with a thickness of one pixel. This is for lens one and this is for lens two. So uh, edges are less defined in poppy images than in uh, flat images. And in a faster succession, uh, the difference is quite clear, isn't it? Poppy lenses draw edges with a thin trans transition zone between adjacent uh, surfaces, which is similar to the way our eyes see. Now this has a, an interesting side effect. It has to do with the depth of field. You can notice that uh, the flat image made by lens number one seems to have a deeper depth of field than lens number two. It has to do with the acuteness of uh, edges. This effect can be quite considerable up to about one stop. 